Hey everybody, it's Trisha and Roland at East March Shakers and we are working on our our um, greenhouse project. So right now we are bending rebar. So we've got this set up with saw horses and a jig, and a jig that was made up for our house I think for steel maybe or I don't know. No. They were doing all just the just wood cutting, cutting all the wood cutting so we're using that put another piece of two by four in I'm giving my weight and then we are whoa, using a pole and bending the rebar and then those will be um, stakes. stakes for the greenhouse we need about 36 of them. 32? Well. 8 times 4. Plus doors. Right. Whoa. So today in our, uh, I also um, not rented, but borrowed a axe, no, what is it? What kind Angle. of grinder? Hmm? Angle. Angle grinder, which also cut the rebar because we've got longer pieces as well. So this was rebar that's left over from doing our cement work um, in the build. And so, we thought we'd use it for this purpose, so there's a lot of small pieces that are, you know, most people would find are not useful anymore, but we're going to find them useful for this. And um, <clears throat> so in our area, we have a restore from Habitat for Humanity, and they have a tool lending library. So I was able to become a member for $60 for the whole year and they have every, uh, tons of tools that you can borrow for a week. So I borrowed this um, angle grinder um, just in case we needed it to cut some of the rebar. So now we're just going to bend, now we're just bending the rebar that is already in small pieces. And then when we're, Roland has started to put some of the, um, some of the pieces together. Oh, gotta keep Albie busy too. Let's get started with what we've got. Okay. Okay, so we'll, we've bent up a few pieces and then we're going to go and put some more of the purlins in the... between the... yeah, outside frame. Okay. See you in a bit.
Okay, this will wrap up Saturday. We uh, were working out here on the high tunnel and uh, got about halfway done. So what we've done to tie things in, so we've taken rebar that we had left over and we've used it to anchor. Now we've just been using a, a couple of hammers, 16 ounce, 20 ounce hammers, and they just aren't uh, heavy enough to be able to do a really good job of uh, uh, moving this stuff into the ground. So we will be um, getting a sledgehammer and uh, moving them the furthest, uh, further into the ground. Uh, so you can see that there, some of them have quite a ways to go. Uh, some of them are quite a bit longer than the other ones as well. And then we've tied the ribs uh, together with these purlins. So there's five purlins for every um, set of ribs that you have. Uh, so it's tied at the top and then each one of the sides uh, has two purlins going through and then two. And so you end up with this repeating pattern of five and then another repeating pattern of five. And so we need to uh, do another four uh, ribs yet um, so that the last one will be placed here. I don't know if you can see that anchor. Um, it's the uh, orange uh, with the yellow string tied around it. And the same thing on this side. And there's two pegs, or actually 12 feet apart from each other. Whereas the distance from this peg to the peg on the far end of the rope is, uh, again, um, 30 feet. Uh, so we'll end up with 12 by 30 foot uh, high tunnel when we're finished. All right, so we've got four more of those to go. And then we need to put on the wood that you can see there. And the wood will go along the side, uh, on each side um, at the bottom. And then along the, uh, the purlin that you're seeing at the center as well. Um, exactly how those tie in, don't know yet, but uh, we will get there um, when we get there. Um, the chickens have been uh, busy today. Uh, they're getting a little bit more adventuresome all the time. I'll just go over and show you what they're up to. They're starting to do a little bit more digging in the ground, uh, etc. So here you can see them, at least most of them, not all. Uh, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine. So there must be two more underneath the, uh, or perhaps inside. There's ten. Where's the eleventh one? I'll have to wait and see. Or do they show up? We've been giving them greens that they seem to enjoy, but they're a little hesitant about uh, coming to take a look at them. Oh, there's the other ones down there. But they're getting there. See, here's one that's working on dandelion. Supposedly, chickens like dandelion a lot, so not sure why they were so hesitant to get into it, other than it's probably brand new for them. They've never experienced it before. There's another one that's going to town in dandelion. Here's a new favorite. Right, another thing that I did today, what we'll be doing tomorrow is pulling the rest of the sunflowers out of the space there and then moving everything forward. I uh, also pulled the tarp uh, over so it's ready to be pulled over the rest of the garden uh, when we are finished. So it's a 25 by 50 foot tarp that we used last year and uh, it's ready to go over. The only place it will not be um, placed in this garden anyways is uh, here from the 
croquet pole that you can see right there to the end of this bed because we have garlic planted there. I don't know if you can see those. The few heads that uh, have already sprouted. Um, they're getting a head start, I guess, this year. Uh, whereas the other ones are sitting dormant, waiting for next year to, uh, to pop their heads out uh, next spring. And I also did the same thing for this garden bed. There's Albie laying there so nicely. So you can see that the tarp is ready to go. Um, so we will not be placing it above, uh, on top of the uh, kale that's here yet. Uh, kale can actually withstand quite a bit of cold weather. And so we'll allow it to keep on growing so that we don't have to uh, harvest it until um, later on in the fall when we'll probably take a bunch of it and put it into the freezer. You'll also see green onion back there. I don't know how well you can actually see it, but the green onion again is a little bit frost tolerant and will keep on growing at a slow rate, albeit, but uh, at a slow rate. And then when we're ready, we can pull it out as well. Um, everything else is basically done. Um, so I, I can pull these cabbages out as well and feed them to the chickens. Don't know if they like the cabbages. Let's see what they do. And then I think I'm going to wrap today's video up. So this one is starting to grow ahead again. Let's see what the chickens do with this cabbage plant, if anything. Might be a little bit on the tough side for them. One coming to check it out. Oh, more. Come on, girls. You can you can try it. See what you like. Okay, they're being reluctant again. Uh, doesn't surprise me. So I am going to go in. I think it's time for a shower and a little bit of TLC. Uh, hit myself with a hammer. And uh, yeah, a little bit of relaxation on a Saturday night. Anyways, we'll talk to you soon. Uh, until later.